In this video segment, we're going to talk about a great new tool called Google Classroom. And when you look at the site HTTPS, be sure and put the S on there, uh, colon forward slash forward slash classroom.google.com, you might open up to something that looks very similar to this, or you might open up to something that looks like this since you've already created courses. Either way, if you're here, you can click the plus sign to add a course. If you're here, you can click the plus sign to add a course. You can see that it has my name. I'm the teacher, and that is there ready for me. And I already have some classes added in here, but we're going to add a new one together. And I'm going to click on the plus sign. And it's going to let me create a course or join a course. And I'm going to create one. And we're going to call it Biology 1. And we'll call it uh, Fourth Period. You can put whatever you want to in here. That's up to you. And then we click on Create. And it automatically creates Biology 1 Fourth Period. It opens up to this purple um, background, but we can change that class theme at any time by clicking on Change the Class Theme. And because it's biology, of course, we need a frog for our theme. And we'll go ahead and add that, and it will change it um, quickly. When we are in here as the teacher, there is a little Start the Tour. And you can uh, click on that. It'll give you a few hints to get started. But when we get ready to go, you're going to see that the stream is anything that your class um, communicates back and forth with you. It's kind of like the home page of Facebook. So the stream is where you'll see all of the announcements and assignments and comments. Your students can be added one at a time by going to the Student tab and inviting them to join. Or they can use the code that's automatically generated when you set the course up. And you can see the code down here in the bottom uh, right-hand corner. Sorry, left-hand corner. I can change that code at any time if I don't like it. Once I have all the students entered in, then we might want to change it so that we don't have kids joining later. Um, so it's up to you. You can delete the class code if you'd like and disable it. But right now, uh, I would share that code out with students. And they'll automatically pop be populated as they join the course under Students. You can delete kids at any time from the Students tab. So as they change from one class period to the other, maybe it's semester or you get new kids in or some leave the district, you can manage students from the Students tab. We're ready to add an assignment or an announcement. And we're just going to add an announcement right here. And we're going to say, welcome to the best course ever. And I can add an attachment to it if I'd like, or a Google Doc, or a YouTube video, or even a web link. Right now, I think I'm just going to add a web link. And I'm going to send them out to my website on the Canyon ISD site so that they can get to know me a little better if I'd like. And I can go ahead and click on Add. So right now, we have one announcement. This is Welcome to the Best Course Ever and one link to the Canyon ISD website. Now, I can choose to assign this to just fourth period biology, or I can choose all of my biologies. And when I do, then I can uh, choose those. And I've selected three courses. And then I'm going to post. And that announcement will go out to biology uh, one courses that I have set up for each of the different uh, course periods. So that'll be logged in, ready to go when the kids log in, and they'll be able to see it. Now, when I get ready to uh, give the first assignment, that's different uh, from an announcement. An announcement's just um, a notice or something that they need to know. But an assignment actually requires them to do something. And so we're going to call this Biology 1 Self-Intro. And they're going to tell me a little bit about themselves. And I can go ahead and give them a little description. And I can set the date for September 5th. And then I can add an attachment from my computer or from my H drive, and it's an actual a, a document. I can choose to add a Google Doc, and I'm going to do that at this time. And I went to my Google Docs, and I created something in there called Biology 1 Self Intro. And Google Class knows to go over to Google Docs, and they tie back and forth together beautifully. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Google 1 Self Intro and add that. Now, I can see that the students right now can only view the file. So if I wanted to put something out for them to read, then they would only be able to view it. 
I could choose to have students edit the file, which would be one thing I might want to do. But in this case, I'm going to make a copy for each student. Now, the best thing about this is it will give the students this file in their Google Drive, and it will add their name automatically to the end of the file name. So it does that, and I don't even have to do it. So I'm going to make a copy for each student, and I'm going to assign it to all of my biologies, or maybe just biology uh, one fourth period at this time. I could add another link out to a science site if I want, a YouTube uh, video if I'd like, but you're going to remember that certain videos uh, for YouTube are blocked for students at school. And then when we're ready, we have it all set, we're going to assign that uh, assignment. And it'll take it just a minute. It's going to show me that there aren't any students enrolled and no one's done the course, but we're, we're okay with that. I want to show you, too, what it looks like in your Google Drive. And I'm in my teacher Google Drive. And you can tell that it automatically created a classroom folder for me. I didn't do that. It did it for me automatically. And here is the biology fourth period that we uh, created. Here's the assignment and then a template. And you want to be really careful of that classroom folder not to delete it and not to make uh, edits when you shouldn't do so uh, tying in with Google Classroom. So it's really kind of cool. Now, I'm a student. I'm going to come in as a student now. You can see that the kids might have a different uh, look to theirs. They're going to join the class. I can tell I'm a student here by canyonstudent.net. They're going to join this class, and they're going to use the code that we set up all ago. And they're going to type in that code that we give them. And then they're going to join the course. And you're going to see automatically that they are added to my Biology 1 fourth period. And look what's waiting on them there, my announcement that says, Welcome to the Best Course Ever, the Canyon ISD website, and their um, self-intro assignment. So I'm a student now. I'm ready to click on Biology 1 self-intro and see what my teacher wants me to do. And as she opens that up, as the student opens it up, you can see that the student can click on the self-intro. And when they do, it's going to open it in their Google Drive. And you'll notice this one says test student, but that was actually the student's name. So it automatically put the student's name on the end of uh, the document file that I set up for them. The students are going to come in and type in, uh, fill in the work. And it asks them to get to know them a little better. What's their favorite candy bar? And I'm going to say Hershey's chocolate. And then when they're finished, they have some options. If they're not done yet, they can uh, exit out and their, their uh, additions will be saved. So they can go back and edit at any time. And you can see that they have editing rights here. But when they're ready, all they're going to do is turn that into the teacher. And this is a new little icon that's been added to Google Drive for them. And when they turn it in, it's going to tell them now that once they turn it in, they can't go back and edit it or make any changes because it's now giving uh, this document over to the teacher. So it's really kind of a neat thing. They can add a note to the teacher. Hope you like my work. And you can see that as the kids turn it in, then they no longer have editing rights on the document. If they uh, lose the turn in, uh, icon here. They can unsubmit it at any time and make a few ch changes to it and then resubmit it so we can go back and forth and, and work on that. When we're looking at the student uh, drive, and this is the student drive, you can tell that it's automatically created a classroom folder for them and just like it did for the teacher and they'll want to be really careful not to uh, edit and delete that folder. So it's a, a great way for them to be able to turn in their work. So now we're a student. We're going to come back over to the teacher. I'm a teacher now. I can see that by Debbie Boyer in the top right-hand corner. So I'm back to being a teacher. And I can see that a student has joined my class. They've actually done the assignment. I can look under the student tab and see that the student is test student. I can also go in and look at the assignment that's been turned in. And when I click on that assignment, I can see that test student has submitted it. It's done. It's now in my area to grade and make comments and maybe give 
feedback. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the test student. Here is their file, has their name on the end of it. I can see that they've given me a note that says, hope you like my work. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on that file. And when I do, here is the student work. And I can see that they've put in their name. They've said their favorite candy bar is Hershey's Chocolate. I might want to make a little comment on here by clicking Comments and Comment. And I can put, I love Hershey's Chocolate, too. And then I can make a comment, and when I send this back to the student, it'll have that comment out to the side for them. We could also say, um, you forgot to answer questions number three, would you please uh, do so and resubmit? Or I can say, you know what, I need a little more detail in the second paragraph. So I can give all kinds of feedback and let the student be able to um, turn it back into me at any time. When the student is in their drive and they're looking at that classroom um, assignment, it's going to tell them that they do not have editing rights any longer. So if they were to click on this from the classroom and open it up, you can tell that it is a view only. They can't make any changes at this point, only a view only file. So that's kind of neat. When we're looking back in the teacher folder, we can see that we've made some comments. It's still here. We haven't turned it back to the student, and we've not graded it. We could have a point scale of 100, 50, 20, 1. We can choose uh, how we want to set that up. I'm going to leave this at 100, and I'm going to say this student gets 100 on this document. And then when I return it to the student, um, I no longer will have access to that. When you return this assignment, the student will be able to edit the return file and be able to comment on them. And I'm going to say, great job to this student and return that assignment. So we can go back and forth between teacher and student. And now as a student, um, I can see that the student is logged in here and the student will be able to see that they have 100 on that course uh, assignment. So when we go back, and look at the hamburger menu. You can see that the student can go into all of their classes from here. They can also look at the assignments, and right now it says, woohoo, no assignments because they've done all of it. And they can go back in at any time and see that they actually made 100 uh, on the assignment that they've already turned in. So it's a really great tool to be able to uh, communicate with kids, to be able to work um, without papers exchanging hand and just an opportunity to give feedback and help kids grow and do better um, in their work by using this tool. So I hope you've learned something new and we'll give your hand a try at trying Google Classrooms. Thank you.